Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to our V for Paper Friday. It's our episode two. And we are going to talk about how to condition V for Paper and all the different things you can use to soften your petals and create beautiful V for Paper flowers like I have right here. So, a few things about V for Paper. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome, 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 welcome! We are going to have a lot of fun today and a few questions I got since the last week uh, about making this V for Paper Friday episodes. First of all, who am I to teach that? My name is Anna Stashkina from Floria Cakes. I'm a pastry chef and award-winning wedding cake designer. You can see a few of my wedding cakes behind me. And my business specializes in teaching how to make V for Paper for all paper paper flowers and design modern cakes using wafer paper techniques different techniques so a few of my favorite flowers wafer paper butterfly ranunculus you can see how textural this beauty is wafer paper sweet peas and we are going to make wafer paper sweet peas on a week four or week five out of our wafer paper series. So we are going to make sweet peas live here on Instagram every Friday, 11 a.m. Uh, wafer paper delphinium. I have a tutorial on YouTube or on my website. Wafer paper David Olson roses. Also, you can see how many layers and how beautiful this flower is. And wafer paper Icelandic poppies. So today we are going to talk about different ways to condition wafer paper and which way I prefer for what application. Because over the years I started working with wafer paper in 2016, if I am correct, if I remember correctly. And never looked back since then because I lived in Florida at that time and with 100% humidity and very high temperatures nothing can could withstand the same environment as wafer paper can do. So even if you live in high humidity and you're worrying about your wafer paper melting or you've had any issues with your wafer paper melting already, I'll teach you everything you need to know to prevent that from happening again. So let me set up my table. A few things we need to keep in mind. When working with wafer paper, is the type of wafer paper you are working with? For example, if you are using zero grade wafer paper or 80 grade wafer paper, we talked about that last week, so you can go back and watch that video. And the thicker your wafer paper is, the more time it will need to absorb your wafer paper conditioner. So my personal preference for making wafer paper flowers is 0.2 millimeters wafer paper. It's the thinnest one. So out of three of them, let me grab my wafer papers. So we have 0.22, we have 0.27, and we have 0.60. 0.60 we used last week and today we are going to use 0.27 because that's the most common you can find in any brands. Oasis Supply, Saracina, Icing Images, uh, Decopark, like a lot of different brands make wafer paper in this grade 0.27 and that's what we are going to use today. I have just a few scraps of wafer paper because I wanted to show you how you can wire your wafer paper and how you can condition your wafer paper. So we'll start with conditioning and we talk about different ways to condition your wafer paper. First and probably most obvious way, um, the way a lot of uh, cake designers uh, used to use throughout the years is to introduce a little bit of steam. I have this handheld mini steamer, so it produces like cold steam, which is very nice for my face because it's very dry in here. But uh, you can use a little bit of steam. My own issue why I don't like using steam, first of all, you cannot color your wafer paper when you use a steamer. And it's so slow. It's just like, I feel that it takes forever for your petal to get enough moisture to be softened. Also, you can apply your wafer paper conditioner or your color with an airbrush the same way you would do with, with the steamer. The better 
it might be a little bit a better version because you can put your color into your airbrush and then apply onto your vapor paper. Again, I have a cordless airbrush because that's what I use for vapor paper. I don't need to have a lot of power. So I prefer to use a cordless airbrush for that and I like it for that application. My personal method and the way I prefer to condition vapor paper to get to give me all of these different beautiful shades, like the one, the one around class I made yesterday. So you can see how textural these petals are, is to use my acetonic. So acetonic is a vapor paper conditioner, which is, uh, I discovered or managed to create it, that that's the right word. So it's called Acetonic. You can comment recipe after we are done with this live demonstration. Just send me a direct message recipe and I will send you a link to my free guide. Where is my, get me grab my free guide. Um, also, if you need a link for the airbrush or steamer, send me a direct message because the comments on a live demo won't be saved and I cannot go back and send it to you because I'm still here talking. Just send me a direct message if you need a link for any airbrush, this thing, or my acetonic. So in my guide for vapor, paper, uh, flowers, there is a recipe for acetonic, different types of vapor, paper, templates, and how to choose vapor paper and a lot of different information like equipment list, everything you need to know when you're working with vapor paper. So today I'm going to show you how to make vapor paper conditioner and how to actually condition your vapor paper petals. So my acetonic vapor paper conditioner contains two ingredients, just two. It's food grade glycerin. Where is it? So Food grade glycerin, any brand. You can buy Wilton everywhere, Walmart, Michaels, whatever, Amazon. Wilton, food grade glycerin and water. But for water, I would highly suggest you to use either bottled water or distilled or at least boiled and cooled down, not your tap water. And the reason for that, we had this issue with our few of our students inside the Vapor Paper Academy when their paddles became brittle, like rock hard dry immediately since using this conditioner, even though it gives the opposite effect. But because of the water and you never know uh, salts, minerals, what you have inside it, like tap water. I highly suggest you for a conditioner or like for using with vapor paper is to use distilled or bottled water because it works the best. So my conditioner is one to four ratio by weight, but if you wanted to download the exact recipe, comment, send me a direct message recipe and I will reply with the link to download my guide. But here we have uh, one important conversation we should have. Why are we using glycerin in our mixture? Why we are not using alcohol? Like I have here a little bit of vodka. When I started making vapor paper flowers, I, I started with using vodka. First of all, I do not drink, so I prefer not to use alcohol in any of my decorations because uh, I started making flowers for kids and I didn't want the kids to, to eat vapor paper flowers that were submerged in vodka. That's how I started looking for different uh, ideas how to work with vapor paper. And then I started looking into all the colors, like airbrush colors, gel colors, all of them contain glycerin because glycerin is a humectant. Our face moisturizer, our hand creams, everything contains glycerin because glycerin attracts moisture and that's what helping us stay soft, plump and young. Same for our vapor paper. That's why we're using glycerin to keep our vapor paper soft, to keep our vapor paper flexible and to make it way easier to work with our vapor paper. And the second ingredient is uh, that we are going to apply is cornstarch. And cornstarch will prevent our wafer paper from melting. I have a cornstarch in a little jar with a brush because that's my perfect, my 
preferred application for cornstarch on wafer paper, it's easier for me to control the amount of cornstarch. So the downside of using cornstarch, it dries your wafer paper out. So if you want your flowers to stay soft for longer, you need to use as little cornstarch as possible. And I always recommend to use as little cornstarch as possible. But to know how much cornstarch or how much glycerin you need to have, you need to apply is you need to know your humidity. So you can see I have this little humidity checker. It says, the humidity meter, it says that my humidity is 36% here in my studio, which is very dry for vapor paper. So obviously in this environment, anything below 60% humidity not going to affect your vapor paper. Hello, hello, hello everyone. We are talking about all the ways you can condition vapor paper today and how to wire vapor paper and make beautiful petals. So if you know your humidity, and you should know your humidity, not just for wafer paper, if you're working with fondant, if you're working with chocolate, your humidity in your room, in your studio, or in your kitchen will demand, like, create the results you're looking for, whether you need to adjust to make it dry, to make it not so dry. So if your environment is very dry, like I have right now, for me personally, what I would do in this uh, case, I will use a little bit more glycerin in my recipe because the paper paper is very dry. It needs a little bit more help with staying soft and pliable. And I will use as little cornstarch as possible to prevent it from melting, but not to dry it out too much. If my humidity will go up like 70% and above, or if I'm worrying about placing my vapor paper in the fridge, or maybe I have an outdoor event, especially for weddings, especially if you wanted to place your uh, cakes uh, outside, or your client wants to see their cakes outside, for an extended period of time, like four hours, five, six hours, and especially if you're afraid it's going to rain, cornstarch is the way to go. Just like drench your wafer paper flowers in cornstarch and nothing is going to happen to them. I have these flowers on my table for probably like at least a few years. And I lived in Illinois at that time when I made these flowers, uh, especially for this David Austin Rose. And you can see nothing have happened through summer rains, winter, dry weather, it just sits on my table or flowers I have behind me over there, they also just in a case on the display uh, because I know how to manage the difference between using a little bit more glycerin or a little bit more cornstarch to prevent my wafer paper from being too dry or to prevent it from melting. So if the only if the concern you have is your wafer paper melting, when placing in the fridge, when placing in the cake, when being outside, make sure that you are being generous with your cornstarch application. Just like be very generous with your cornstarch application. Today my environment is very dry, so I would rather put a little bit more glycerin into your mixture, into my mixture. And if you want a recipe for my wafer paper conditioner, send me a direct message recipe and I will share my free guide with all with all this information. So Let's see what we can do and how you can see my table. These Instagram lives are challenging to do because a lot of technical things goes into making them. Okay, so I hope you can see my table. If you have comments that are um, not allowing you to see it fully, just swipe them to the side and then you will see my table. So on my table here, I have a piece of wafer paper and on this wafer paper, I'm going to apply my wafer paper conditioner. But before that, I wanted to uh, apply wire or add wire to my wafer paper. And to do that, I prefer to use my wafer paper glue, which is also in the guide. You can download that as well. And wafer paper glue is basically wafer paper melted in water. I collect all my scraps wafer paper scrubs, whatever I'm doing, if I'm making flowers, like if I'm cutting flowers. I was teaching a class yesterday, so these are my scrubs from yesterday's class. I will collect all my little scrubs, place them in a heat proof bowl, I have a little glass, add a little bit of water and melt in the microwave. So I make my wafer paper glue in the microwave because this is the consistency I'm looking for. You can see my wafer paper glue is very thick. 
I know it doesn't look very pleasant, but that's that's how it's supposed to be. It should be very thick. Then it's not going to affect your wafer paper. So it's not going to melt your wafer paper when you're applying your wafer paper glue. And for me personally, I prefer to make fresh wafer paper glue every single time. I use it and I just make small amount, maybe half a teaspoon, and it will last me throughout the day. And then I'm going to throw it away and make a fresh one. And uh, I see I see you have conversations in the comment section. That's so fun. Hello, hello, hello. Share this live stream if you wanted to invite your friends. Let's have fun and talk about wafer paper because that's the reason we are here. So now I have my wafer paper and as we talked yesterday, not yesterday, in the previous conversation, you can cut up to three layers of wafer paper. This is 0.27 millimeters wafer paper and I'm going to create a few petals for maybe something similar to an, uh, a puppy, something like relatively large so you will see the results I'm going for. So I have three of my petals and if I wanted to wire my petals there are a few different methods to do that. If you're working for a smaller petal, first of all let's talk about wires. I have this wire by uh, New York Cake brand and it's 26 gauge but what you're looking for is to have a cloth or paper covered wire because wafer paper is not going to stick to a like, plain wire naked wire. I don't know how to explain a wire that is not covered in cloth or paper. Naked? is Can wire be naked? So you can see that these wire are covered in paper, very thin layer of paper and wafer paper will stick to that beautifully to this type of wire. So for working with wafer paper or any sugar or craft, sugar craft or wafer paper or decorations, look for paper covered wire or cloth covered wire. There are different brands, but make sure that it looks like either white or green and it's covered in something. So if you're making wafer paper petals, something for something small, like for example, maybe one inch or smaller, two and a half centimeters or smaller. If you're making maybe eucalyptus leaves or something that is very small in size, like two and a half centimeters, one, one inch or smaller. You can use your wire, just your plain wire. So I have a piece of paper, paper here and you can see it's relatively small. I have my wire. I'm going to take a small brush for my wafer paper glue and I'm just applying my wafer paper glue onto my wire a little bit, just a small amount. And then I will run a little layer, like a little line of wafer paper glue onto my wafer paper and stick my wire right here, removing all the access. So now my wafer paper is stuck to my wire and I have my first wire pedal. You can see that I applied my wire on the back side, so on the front when it dries it's not going to be visible. For something small like this, like two and a half centimeters or one inch or smaller, this method of wiring wafer paper works perfectly because it's just enough strength uh, for you, for your wire to hold into wafer paper. If you have something larger, like two and a half centimeters or larger than that, then you need to use a different method. For that, I prefer to use my pedal. So this is uh, 0.27 millimeters wafer paper. This is searching a brand and it's uh, bumpy on one side and shiny on the other side. I wanted to use my bumpy side as my face side, so I'm going to place my bumpy side down and then cut another piece of wafer paper to use another scrap of wafer paper, maybe like this, and create like a veining on the back side, something like that. So you can see it's relatively small, it's relatively thin, but it's almost the size of my petal. So I'm looking to do something like that. If you want your wafer paper piece to be less visible, you can like, tear apart little pieces to make sure that it's not even, it's not going to be as bright on the fr front side. Hello, hello, hello. So for wafer paper, it depends on what you wanted to use. 
like with V for paper, we are just playing, we are just having fun. There is no right side, there is no wrong side, whatever works for you, works for you. There is no wrong or right answers. So a front side for me, when I'm working with V for paper conditioner, with easy tonic and I apply color with my V for paper tonic or apply any liquid color like gel color, airbrush color, I use the bumpy side as the front side of my pedal. So bumpy side is going to be my front side when I'm working with liquid colors, gel, airbrush, any application on that side. If I don't want to add any color, but I wanted to add some pearl sheen, or I wanted to dust my pedals, then I will, I, I will use my smooth side of a pedal as a front side. And you know, smooth side will, um, give you like a better look when you're applying pearl colors. For me today, because I'm making paddles for V for V for Poppy, I use bumpy side as my face side. So I'm going to place my bumpy side down on my table because I wanted to wire the back side. Then I'll take this piece of V for paper and use my bumpy side again. On this side, I'm applying my V for paper glue on the bumpy side same way we did for previous method. So I'm applying a thin layer of V for paper glue. And my V for paper glue is relatively thick, so it's not going to melt my V for paper. I'll place my wire here. And first thing, I'm sticking my V for paper, my wire to my V for paper. So I'm gluing my wire to my V for paper first. Apply a little bit more V for paper glue to make sure that my wire is going to stay in place here. And then I'm going to stick this piece onto the back side of my pedal. So I'm creating like a V for paper sandwich. You can see that I'm sandwiching my wire. It's similar to maybe twiddle method. If you're working with gum paste or sugar paste, it's very similar concept that we are applying V for paper on the back side and not sticking it through the pedal. So on the back side, it looks like this. You can see that my wire is sandwiched between two pieces of wafer paper. And on the front, when it dries, it's not going to be visible. So it's going to be clear and not noticeable when my wafer paper glue dries. So when I wanted to condition my pedals or do anything with that, usually I glue my wires on, set it aside, and then leave it to dry for maybe like five, 10 minutes before I'm going to do anything else with my V for paper, like especially conditioning because I don't want my wires to become undone. For wires for V for paper, I have my little handy thing. This is actually for, um, I think for needles or something for, um, cross stitching or something, but I use it for my wires. This part is magnetic. You can buy it in any craft store. I just find it's an easier way to store my wires. So for my wires, for my leaves, I prefer to use 26 gauge wire. For my petals, it's either 28 or 30, depends on the thickness of my petal, like on the size of my petal. For something like this size, I would use 28 gauge wire. For smaller petals, I might use 30 gauge wire. And for my leaves, I would use 26 gauge wire. So this is just a contraption to store my wires and you can see all of them almost in place. This is 22 gauge for my stems. So when I'm going to apply my conditioner onto my petals. First thing we need to talk about is how much conditioner you need to apply and how you're going to apply your vapor paper conditioner. Here I have my handy dandy palette. I have my petal. I'll prepare my cornstarch because I'm going to apply cornstarch almost immediately onto my vapor paper petal for, to prevent it from melting. And let me grab a veneer to show you how to use that. So I have a veneer. This is a large peony by the Sugar Art Studio. And you can see how textural and how deeply engraved this veneer is. That's what I like about these veneers, these types of veneers, because then you can use it to make all sorts of different flowers. The only veneer I use for all my flowers is this large peony by the Sugar Art. So. I have my palette. I'll take my V for paper conditioner on the palette. And let me add a little bit of color so you can see what I'm doing. Let's 
will be very visible for you. For my brushes, I personally prefer to use flat brushes. Like these, these are watercolor brushes. They are the same type of brushes. That's what I like to use for wafer paper. They are flat and they hold a lot of moisture. So when I'm working with my wafer paper conditioner, you can see my mixture is very watery, but dark so you can see what I'm doing. When I'm thinking about how much conditioner should I have on my brush, I'm looking for a certain saturation that is going to be enough for my wafer paper petals to become soft and flexible and fancy and beautiful, but not melt. We wanted to prevent melting as, as much as possible. How to find that sweet spot between uh, too little or too much. Let's talk about being too much. I have a few of my petals here. So if I'm going to take my brush, saturate it with my conditioner, and apply that onto my petal. We are working on the bumpy side of wafer paper. And I'm going to apply that onto my petal. You can see that I have a lot of moisture here and it creates puddles on my wafer paper petal. And even if I'm going to condition and run my brush around saturating my wafer paper petal, you can see how uneven the color is. And the darker spots here means that my Wafer paper is probably going to melt because there is just too much moisture. So when you're conditioning your petals, what you're looking for is to have an even coverage and avoid darker spots. That means you have too much moisture on your brush. The second option, if we are going to take our brush and make it as dry as possible, and then do the same application. So my brush is almost dry. I barely have any moisture on my brush, and I'm going to apply that onto my wafer paper. You can see that this petal is dry. Some of these parts are stayed white, so it's not enough moisture. This is too much moisture, this is not enough moisture. So this petal is like a good example of what you need to do and do not need to do. White parts or lighter colored parts like this, they are dry. You're not going to be able to vein that or do anything with that. Darker parts like this is too much moisture. So we're looking for color like this, but even coverage throughout the whole petal. How I go about doing that is I saturate my brush into my wafer paper conditioner and I scrape it on the side of my palette until it stops dripping. So you can see it drips, it drips, and now it's almost there. So maybe a few more scrapes on the side until it starts dripping. And I know that I have enough moisture on my brush, but not too much to melt my petal. Then, and also it depends on the size of the petal you're working with. Then I'm going to take my brush and be very mindful like how much moisture I have. I might check it either on my palette or somewhere on the side. And then I'll start spreading my wafer paper conditioner onto my petal to create, uh, to get as even coverage as possible. So I'm working relatively fast with a light but firm strokes, going one direction first and then crisscrossing, making sure that my petal is covered very evenly. Because this petal is relatively large in size, I might need to pick up a little bit more wafer paper conditioner to apply that an even layer. And when you're just practicing or you haven't done any wafer paper flowers before, start with a smaller petals or with a lighter colored conditioner. So you can see that my petals started to curl, but it's still very, very dry because my wafer paper is 0.27 millimeters. So now I need to apply wafer paper conditioner on the back side. I'm going to turn it upside down and stick it to my table and apply my wafer paper conditioner on the back side as well. The same way to give me an even coverage. And I'm going all the different directions because all I need to do is to create an even layer of wafer paper conditioner on top of my petal. So you can see now it's soft and it's colored on both sides and I wanted to place it in my veiner. My wafer paper is very flexible at that time but it's not melting because I applied just the right amount of wafer paper conditioner. Before placing my wafer paper into a petal veiner I'm going to apply cornstarch on both sides to prevent it from sticking into my veiner. So now is my favorite texture 
in terms of paper paper being soft but flexible enough so i can get that into veneer and create beautiful petals and when you are veining your wafer paper the important thing you need to pay attention to is with for example with sugar flowers the harder you press on your veiner the better designs you're going to get like the deeper veining you're going to get with paper paper is different the longer you keep your petals inside your veiner the better results you're going to get so if you have time keep your petals inside your veiner for maybe like 10 15 seconds and then you will get you can see beautiful texture without any mishaps our petals stay soft and intact like everything you can see every single bump and crevice on that and i'm going to release my petal off of my veneer and we got this beautiful textural v for paper petal giving us all these beautiful shapes and there is like no ribs no tears nothing it's fully intact and it's fully beautifully veined i'm going to place it on the side to dry and you can use a petal former you can use whatever you want for something like this uh for big for paper icelandic poppies i prefer to use egg shapers or something like sil silicone shapers to give them this beautiful shape and then when they dry you can put them together in a different flowers and i assemble my v for paper flowers with um, v for paper glue as well if you have your v for paper petals wired like we did today it will be easier for you to put them together in a different arrangement the way you want it to so that's how we do that let me know if you have any questions if you wanted to download my v for paper conditioner direct message me recipe and i will send you my guide same goes for any links you wanted to get for the um, little steamer this little guy or my cordless airbrush i'll send you the links they are of amazon that's i there is no gatekeeper here gatekeeping here hello chef you put cornstarch with what with nothing it's just cornstarch it's just plain cornstarch there is nothing else i apply my cornstarch on my petal before placing that into veneer so i condition my v for paper so v for paper petal with um, acetonic with my v for paper conditioner which is a free recipe you can make it yourself and then i apply a layer of cornstarch and then i place it into a veneer i do have an uh, amazon storefront for that so you can find that on my profile so it's uh, my amazon storefront is linked in my profile and then just send me a direct message i won't be able to see these comments after our live demonstration is done so if you want some, if you want a link for something send me a direct message if you have a question ask away i'm here to help you navigate that you mentioned having paddle with wire first is easier or should we color first and then put wire so i have my petals here they're still drying they are probably already dry if you wanted to put your petals on the wire you need to wire your petals first let it dry for maybe 10 15 minutes and then you can condition color and shape your petals because after your petals are dry and already conditioned like this one this is still so it will be very hard for you to attach a wire right here because the other part of your wafer paper won't be won't have the same texture or the same color so if you wanted to put your petals on the wire you need to wire your petals first let it dry and then condition and shape it uh, hi chef hello how to stick the petals to floral wire you can go back and watch this demonstration i already showed two different methods how to do that uh, by applying your wire to your vapor paper it's already there so you can go back and watch that a beautiful work what is that flower press called again this is um the sugar studio or the sugar art the sugar art studio a large petal veiner so this is my favorite one this is the beautiful beautiful very detailed amazing vapor amazing veiner that i use for vapor paper and i use that to make all my petals inside my vapor paper academy so we use the same veiner for roses peonies uh, butterfly ranunculuses uh, icelandic poppies what else sweet peas so you can buy just one veiner you can 
invest in just one good high quality vein you can use it for everything i like this one because of the size it's relatively large and the quality is amazing and it's a great company to support thank you so much how to make V for paper glue. So for my V for paper glue, you can download the guide. I have a recipe how to make V for paper glue in my free guide. And basically what I do is I collect all my scraps like this. I have my scraps on the table. Let me grab another, another little glass. So I have a little glass um, that I can put in the microwave. I collect all my V for paper scraps like that. Usually I have a little bowl for all my vapor paper scraps. Then I put a little bit of water, not the conditioner, just plain water here to help my vapor paper to melt. And when it starts melting a little bit like this, so I mix them all together like that. You can see I put it all together, submerge my vapor paper in water and I place it in a microwave in 5-10 second increments and mix it until my wafer paper is completely melted and dissolved and then it becomes this wafer paper glue very thick gelatinous consistency that I use to glue everything with wafer paper thank you so much, thank you so much for joining uh, if you send me a direct message and ask for a link, I will share that. I cannot share that in the chat right here because I don't have it. Um, if you wanted to download my V for a paper guide for the recipe, direct message me recipe and I will send you the link for the exact recipe for in grams and teaspoons to make your V for paper conditioner. And next Friday, we are going to make um, V for paper wedding flowers. Let me see if I have some because I already started planning our sessions for the rest of our conversations. So next Friday, we are going to make this beautiful V for paper flowers, and they are so easy to make. So I'll show you how to create all these panels, how to put everything together, how to tape your V for paper flowers, and that's what we are going to do next Friday, V for paper wedding flowers. And if you are on my newsletter list, I will send you the link to all the templates and everything on Tuesday. So on Friday, you can join me and work together. Uh, so next, yeah, so next Friday, uh, I see Kevin, can you show how to make V for paper flower center? Next Friday, we are going to do that. Is the made from scratch. What do you mean by made from scratch? V for paper is not, made from scratch you can buy wafer paper it comes in a pack of how many sheets you decide to buy but no you buy wafer paper is made out of cornstarch out of potato starch oil and water and it looks like it resembles a printer regular paper and that's what we use to make all of these beautiful flowers yeah okay thank you so much thank you you are so 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 welcome Thank you so much for the explanation and the detail. Your work is amazing. Thank you. I love I love me for people. I love teaching. I love making wedding cakes. I love teaching how to make wedding cakes. And the most amazing thing, I love teaching how to make wedding cakes with wafer paper flowers. That's that's my thing. Uh, the panels have to dry on a spoon to fix the shape. Yes, you can use a spoon. Mine is uh, on a piece of. Uh, on a roll of paper towel sometimes I use different veneer di different shapers for different things you can put them on a spoon you can put them in uh, like egg former uh, something like egg shaped like for deviled eggs uh, my favorite thing to dry paper paper petals on thank you chef how long can uh, the flower last and how to store it so wafer paper flowers can last for decades these ones I have on my table for at least two years. Um, they've just been on my table forever and ever. I haven't done anything to them. So they are just uh, being stored like this and they get direct sunlight onto them. Nothing is happening. The colors are not fading. That's my favorite part about working with wafer paper. You can see this bright blue. I can keep it in direct sunlight and it's not going to fade compared to gum paste flowers or um, sugar paste flowers. If you put anything in like uh, blue or pink color in direct sunlight, the color will fade immediately. Or I store them in my case like this 
Also, if you wanted to store them for a long period of time, I would suggest you to put them in a food grade, like plastic containers with silica gel packets, because silica gel packets will help you to navigate the changes in humidity when it's too dry or too moist. And I keep a lot of my flowers. I don't know if I can show you. So you can see those box, boxes on top. So peanut, packing peanuts, plastic boxes, and a few silica gel packets. That's how I store all my vapor paper flowers. So these are extras that I'm going to reuse on different cakes. And you can keep them for years. Nothing is going to happen to vapor paper. If you let it dry before you're going to put it in storage, make sure that your flowers are completely dry. So I've missed a piece if you add the veneer uh you're willing to paint in when do you do it before or after adding the veneer thank you so much anna uh you can go back and watch the replay but first of all you need to wire your pedal if you wanted to wire your pedal then you apply vapor paper conditioner then you apply cornstarch then you put in that into your veneer and you have a beautiful pedal uh, from when you started making vapor paper part did it take practicing before you made pretty flowers. So my my issue, I think that was my issue with making vapor paper flowers. I started working with using vodka because at that time everyone used vodka and I didn't like my flowers because they became so dry and so brittle immediately. I just didn't like the texture, not the look, but the texture. But making flowers to look beautiful, to look realistic, to look like that, and that's what I teach inside my Vapor Paper Academy. The main secret behind creating beautiful flowers, it's not, um, it's to understand how your clients will perceive your flowers. So it doesn't matter whether you are, uh, you know a lot of about flowers. I do know a lot about the structure of the flower, but I'm explaining in very, uh, detailed way to make sure that your clients will see your flowers as expansive as delicate and you're training your eye onto creating very specific flowers and very specific shapes so even for these butterfly ranunculuses i know they look fluffy they look very detailed they look very kind of like fancy even though they are so easy to make because i'll teach you how to create the shape i'll teach you how to place petals in a way that they are separated between each other and they look very textural so when i understood how to um, position my petals more than anything my flowers became beautiful and textural and just like mm, i love my I, I love making paper paper flowers and i love talking about that and all my templates, everything I'm working with, all my flowers I'm making, every single flower I taught here on Instagram or on my website or on YouTube, I practice a lot. So I make a lot of battles before I can share something. So yes, I do practice a lot. I cannot say anything about that. I do practice a lot. But even for my V4 Paper Magnolias, for example, for that course, I created like at least 20 or 30 different shapes before I found the one that works. So every single time you're downloading my free template or inside our Vapor Paper Academy, all of those flowers and petals have been tested a thousand times before you get to play with that. So yes, great templates and um, Vapor Paper Conditioner and just step-by-step -step process will help you to create beautiful flowers the same. It doesn't mean that you need to practice for years and years and years. That's just a, what I prefer to do. That's why I'm doing that. Thank you so much for your kind words. Yay! How long did it take you after you started using vapor paper to turn on beautiful flowers? I think it's the same question I just answered. It just, you might start so for you, if you never worked with vapor paper and you'll start with making something like you wanted to make something like this, the butterfly ranunculuses, it might take you like three flowers and on the fourth, you'll create a beautiful flower. So you can go from nothing to amazing flowers in one day, maybe two days, if you sit down and thoughtfully go through the process. It's not that hard. It's, it's fun. It's vapor paper. It's fun. It's actually fun. Mr. Day says, Shan, yeah, um, you can go back and watch, I'll save it. I'll try to save it as much as I can, but you know that technology is not always working in our favor. And yeah, I'll try to save it, but I cannot promise you anything because 
technologies, Beaker Beaver Conditioner, please uh, direct message me word recipe and I will send you the link to download my Beaker Beaver Conditioner. So thank you so much. I'll see you next Friday. We are meeting here every Friday, 11 a.m. New York time is our standard time for our Beaver Beaver Fridays. We have today, this week is week two, so we have four more classes. Everything about V for paper. Next week, we are going to talk about making beautiful V for paper wedding flowers. I have similar in the yellow color over there. And these, these ones are my go to for every arrangement and for every client who doesn't want to pay a lot for handcrafted V for paper flowers. So I'm going to teach that next Friday, V for paper Friday, 11 a.m. And I will put all the notifications. So just follow me here on Instagram. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.